Ooh, child. The girls is back. And I'm ready to get into it, okay? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What's up, YouTube world? It's your favorite 90s baby coming to you live, live, and always and forever grateful to be alive. Hallelujah! So today, hi, hey, hey. So today we're here. We're gonna do a little Black Ink Crew review from last night. And yeah, because Black Ink Crew is my judge. Black Ink Crew and Star, that's where we're gonna be at for the next few weeks. So jumping right into it. Caesar's opening monologue. Um, he was giving me very much like GTA vibes and like, I'm gonna be honest with you, I hate when Caesar talks. I just, I don't, I don't wanna say I hate Caesar as a person because I feel like outside of the Black Ink Crew cameras, Caesar is a very like nice, deep and down to earth type of guy. But when he stepped in front of these cameras and he called himself with them soup cooler, burning soup coolers he got on his lips, um, I don't even know what to call them, but like when he's, when his lips start moving, it just, it irritates me. He be trying way too hard. Like, Caesar, he just really be, like, doing way too much. And, like, it can be the most serious of serious of, 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 of moments. Then he, say for a second, I come in and I stub my toe on the edge of the bed. And I'm sitting here cursing out the whole world. Caesar will come in like, you stub your toe, man. Y'all, fuck this shit. Still, bro, like, yo, chill out, bro. Me, you just be doing too much. And then when he had that whole little block party situation, he talking about, ain't no block party like a Harlem block party. Yeah, boy. Like, what you thought you was Flavor Flav? Or no? I don't know who bugs me worse, Caesar or Charmaine from uh, Chicago. Because I can't deal with these wannabe young and the restless as acting. Like, I can't. And um, can we get in the Tati's confessional look? Because, baby girl, I don't know who you're, this, this, this is what I want you to do. Just tuck that in, tuck that in, and then just lift this up. Because I don't know who your stylist was, or who was, who was even shooting you while you were on camera, but they both need to, all, all of them need to be fired. You know how when you put a cake in the oven, and it's like, it's, it's been in for like 20, 30 minutes, and that joint's starting to rise, but you ain't prepared for how, like, I guess thin the batter was because it's starting to rise. It look nice and golden brown on the top. You're like, oh, yeah, this bitch is done. Like, you just touch it just to make sure, and then that shit go, whoom, like the cake sinking in, in the middle, and then your cake gets off. That's what her boobs look like because she, yeah, she was giving me very much like the faded cake tease. And it wasn't cute. But her face was her face was good. Her makeup was cute. Her little bun was cute. But like this situation right here, I just need you to tuck that in, sis. Just tuck it in and lift it up. So during the whole block party situation, Caesar reveals that he's opening a new shop in New Orleans. Now to keep it a being with you, I feel some type of way. Because Caesar was on Instagram a few months ago teasing about, you know, all these different shops that he was looking into and going to visit and looking into opening and things like that. And one of those shops was one, one of the ones here in Philly. He was trying to open a shop on South Street. And so, you know, he was, they had, like, I think they're still opening it. But I'm not sure if he's going to feature it on a show. Because, you know, they have been holding interviews and things like that. But it's just like, you know what? I can see why he probably, they probably not going to feature on the show. Oh, y'all like my earring? She cute. I can see why they probably not going to feature on the show. Because Philly too ratchet. And Philly too ghetto. Especially down there on South Street. Like they going to be down there trying to shoot the show. And people going to be coming up. Like, like people going to be coming up trying to get in the damn shoe. And like people just going to be going to the shop just to be on the show. Like ain't nobody going to be at no tattoos. People here barely want to pay for a bus token to get on the bus. Who think they going to like what make you think they going to go down to fucking Black Ink Crew to get a tattoo. Yeah, I feel some type of way that they using them. They're showcasing the New Orleans one. And not the Philly one. But, you know, it's cool because, in my opinion, you know, one of these shops got to make some freaking money because 125th, I mean, out of all the ones that's currently open, that's been open before they revealed the New Orleans ones, 125th was the only shop that was semi-actually doing something on the show and actually making some kind of money. The original shop, they use that for um for, for recording for the show. They don't do no tattoos at that shop. The only one they really do is 125th. So, one of these shops got to make some money, and I feel like New Orleans is going to be that one, especially with them you know, having a full kitchen 
and having a bar and things like that. But my question with that is, can we just make sure they got the serve safe certifications? You know, the bartender actually has a bartender certificate. You know, actually went to school for it. Um, now let's just make sure everything is in order because like, tattooing is supposed to be like very sanitary and stuff like that. So, I feel like, you know, having a bar and having a place where people eat food and probably going to smoke cigars and do all this stuff. Why are you getting a tattoo? I really don't think that's sanitary. So, I really wonder how Caesar really got around all those codes and stuff and violations and all like that. To have that allowed. Because I never heard of no tattoo shop having a full bar and a full kitchen. But that's none of my business. So, Daddy. Daddy, whoa. Whoa. Daddy. Um, so now he reveals that, you know, he's been dealing with his alcoholism and I want to say, I don't want to say alcoholism, but I guess you could say that his, his alcohol addiction and, you know, him being damn near homeless and just struggling for the past few months and all jokes aside, this just goes to show that these reality TV show checks, these YouTube checks, these just checks period that these TV people and famous people try to you know, get off, you know, working honest and the damn sure don't always pay the bills. Um, and that just goes to show that these reality TV show checks aren't really doing what, you know, these people try to make it seem like they're doing. And I honestly respect Walt and I appreciate Walt for really bringing that to the limelight and actually showcasing that, yo, like, yeah, I'm on this, I'm on VH's one, number one rated TV show, but the checks ain't doing nothing, sis. And I was, I was happy that, you know, C's eventually did let him go to, you know, New Orleans, New, New Orleans. So, you know, cause, uh, Walt, my man Walt needs some money and I don't care, Walt's still fine, so. <laughs> Donna and Alex, we already knew that they was talking, um, you know, if you follow one, either one of them on Instagram, even the shade room and stuff like that, you will see them frolicking and doing a stuff. So they're not relevant. Next, Sky being Sky being Sky being extra coming in like she the queen of Egypt on that um, that Mariah Carey throne. Sky, honestly, she gotta chill because she just be doing way too much. She just had me like looking at the TV like. This goes into the whole VH1 like being fake thing. Like it's known that VH1, especially the Love and Hip Hop and um, Black Ink Crew and all that, they they're known for throwing in, sprinkling in a little bit of the fake with the real, just to give y'all some entertainment. If you follow them on social media, especially Sky and the Love and Hip Hop and VH1 like fan pages and stuff like that, you would have saw the behind the scenes clip of all this going down in the shop when Sky came in and her waiting outside for her cue and that. So it was just like, okay, girl, like whatever tati's emotional support dog i don't know who it was i'm not sure if that was walt I'm not sure if that was uh teddy but one of them was like yo your emotional support dog need this emotional support okay because it was just like really tati girl like you just she just she just needed a part she just needed a part in the scene that's all that was that's what i felt like that was i just felt like that was pointless um and she was talking about yeah because she not sure um what they expect from you guys you know insinuating that she ain't want to get beat the, beat the hell up again because every and she was like because you know every time she turned around people trying to fight her she getting jumped but it's like girl if you keep running your gums then of course you won't get beat the hell up so see you're not picking donna to go on this new orleans trip my take on this whole situation is now I'm gonna say this. For this specific instant, I will have to say that I do agree with Donna on this. Not for the sole fact of her saying that, you know, she's been here longer than everyone, blah, 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 blah. That's beside the point. Just, just using the show aspect itself. Donna has been here from, you know, the very first season. Donna brings a lot of, I guess, entertainment value to the show along with sky and unfortunately caesar so that right there should just should have just been like all right like girl like you we we, we need something we need a storyline to keep going we need we, we need a couple more seasons like girl come on let's go and then on top of that okay if you want to bring in donna's work and stuff like that yeah, she, you know, she had a few tattoos in the past. I mean, girl, that uh, cupcake tattoo that you did was kind of, was kind of like a little sketchy. Donna's, Donna is kind of like, um, what's that girl name? Cat from Chicago. It's like she be there, but she really not there. 
when she actually sit down, close her, close her legs, and like keep her mouth closed and actually do some work, Donna is actually really, she's a really good tattoo artist on, along with being an entertainer. And she knows how to market. Like Donna's very, as much as people hate to believe and as much as Caesar, you know, try to downplay Donna, Donna's a very good marketer and Donna knows what the hell she, Donna knows what she's doing. So she knows how to make TV and she knows how to keep her storyline going. Bay passing her citizen, United States citizens test. I mean, it was cute. I mean, she picked a real inopportune time to go take this test and become an American citizen. But I mean, it was a cute little moment. Congratulations, boo. Congratulations to you. So designer comes to the shop to get a tattoo from Caesar and Caesar, of course, being Caesar, you know, starts, how can I put this politely, slobbing the knob of designer. Here, like, hop off. Like, he's sitting here talking about, yo, my bro designer, yo, I'm so proud of him. Yo, when he dropped Panda, yo, that chum was crazy. And now he about to drop the new album and he only 21. She designed a bro. Now, what really irritated me about this whole scene was when Caesar kind of had the audacity to basically compare designer to Jay Z and Biggie. You gonna say designer was really out here doing his thing, which like really when was the last time we had a song from designer? But that's beside the point. You gonna sit here and say like yeah, like you know designer really sat here and made it out of Bed Stuy, and you know Biggie and Jay was the only other people that was able to do that. And, you know he really admired him for that and this that and the third basically so forth and so heavy. And I'm just like yo, girl, like. Really? You really just sat here and compared designer to Biggie and Beyonce's boyfriend? Like, really? Okay, Caesar, your respect points just went right down here because that was just straight disrespect and that was you could try to create a moment and trying to create a scene and trying to create this whole sentimental thing with the music in the background and then start his tattoo. Like, you should have just got straight to the tattoo, kicked his ass out, and kept it moving because that was really stupid. And then unfortunately, on a serious note, Bay um, ended up having her baby prematurely. And it was kind of a freak moment. This is one of those real moments that I, you know, that VH1 had to throw in there. Um, and this really, I want to say struck home, but I really sympathize with Bay and how she was feeling and how worries in this situation because my little brother was actually born premature. When I say he was premature, like he like literally could fit in the palm of my hands. And the doctors was really worried about him basically saying that, you know, they wasn't sure if he was going to, I guess, grow up normal and, you know, basically be the person that he is right now. But fortunately enough, you know, the little boy, he almost taller than me, you know, he's completely healthy. He's, you know, striving, doing what he has to do in certain extents. So I can see where Bay's worries are because you always see like preemie babies and you know they always have all these health problems and you know it's just scary knowing that your baby isn't full term and you know came a month two months early. I really wish Bay the best. I wish our baby the best and I wish our fine behind husband you know. I wish nothing but the best on her and her baby and her family. So okay so then after that it goes to um, Alex and Donna at Coney Island. And, you know, they're doing their boo-loving stuff. He wins her the teddy bears, this, that, and the third, blah, 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 blah. The scene kind of centered around Donna trying to get Alex to stay with her in New York instead of going with them to um, New Orleans. And Donna's whole premise of him staying with her was, I just wanted to spend time with you. That I realized that was my main reason why me wanting to go to New Orleans in the first place. So the solution for me, not thinking about you and your feelings and your money and your advancement in a career, but for me, I want you to stay because I want to see you. And in the midst of all this, Alex was saying like how he wanted Donna to be his girlfriend, but she was saying she ain't want no labels and this, that, and the third. But then she turned right around and threw it in his face. Oh, this how you want to try to start off with me being your girlfriend? Da 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 da. And see, I hate when girls and guys and just people, period, try to throw this whole guilt trip on people like how Donna did, talking about, you know, basically saying that you're my nigga, like you have to cater to me. And. I'm supposed to be your world and you know, you want me to be your girl, this is what you gotta do. And if you don't do this, 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 then this, then 
What am I here for? But in Donna's situation, she got to realize, baby girl, it's all about compromise. And at the end of the day, I'm not saying that I don't want to be with you and I don't want to go out and cheat. I want to do this, that, and the third. But it's like, girl, I'm trying to sit here and make my money. And I'm thinking of my career long term. And putting even aside, you know, making the money situation and stuff like that. This is a respect thing. Like, this man seizure bailed me out of jail. And he's really been sitting here taking me on his wing, making sure I'm good with all my legal issues and just life period this is my way of saying thank you to this man if you can't see that and you're going to be as selfish as to say i want you to stay here because i want to see you and how you want to sit here and start off with me being your girlfriend in this whole situation then like you're wrong and Alex was like, girl, you can sit here and say what you want. You can sit here and spaz on me and try to guilt trip me and walk away all you want. I'm going to make this money, but on the same token, I'm going out of respect. Teddy hitting on Tati at the, um, at the little, uh, the little Airbnb. Now, I'm not going to lie, Teddy. I agree with you. Like, Tati was over there looking kind of thick. Like, I was just like, okay, girl, like. So, when they cut to that scene where they was all in the pool and C was like, yo, like, Dude, like, y'all supposed to be at the shop, like, and y'all here, nobody showed up. Like, what's what's going on? I ain't gonna lie, that was funny as hell, because I would have been pissed if I'm sitting here waiting at the shop and nobody fucking showed up. Teddy was looking kind of good in that pool, like... I ain't gonna lie, like, I was looking like... Hey, Teddy, like... I was thinking about cheating on Walt for a second, like, Teddy was looking kind of scrumptious in that pool. So closing out the show, Sky and Caesar had their whole little debacle about Sky going to Texas for four days to go see her son off the graduation and, you know, blase, blase, bye. Caesar was feeling some type of way and, you know, they had their whole argument about why she can't go. He wanted her to come back like that in the day and, you know, basically not spend four days in Texas. And he wanted her to come right back to handle the business situation of the, you know, shop or whatever. He has to realize that she's just recently within the past what like year or two just to repair her relationship with her son so i can see where sky's coming from where she's like i'm going to spend time with my fucking son fuck you mean like i don't care what business i have going on i don't care what's going on in my life like my my family and my sons come first and her whole thing was yeah like i'm going to go to his graduation but who's to say we're not going to want to go out to eat we're not going to want to chill we're not going to do this we're not going to do that because any black family know that after a graduation or a big family event or a big family um just the occasion period like where somebody's graduating or birthday or whatever you know we go out to eat and then we have a little situation at the house everybody come over you know it's like a little cookout and then still the day after y'all go to ahop the next morning and then you know it's like a whole weekend thing so it's not just a one-time situation and so i just felt like that whole argument was kind of pointless and Caesar knows Sky's situation so I feel like again this this is one of those fake moments where they was just trying to create a TV scene um and just try to create a moment and try to create some drama because at the end of the day you already know Caesar was gonna let Sky go because Caesar let Sky do whatever the hell she wanted to do. So anyway, that was Black Ink Crew New York. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below or you know DM me on Instagram or hit me up on Snapchat. You know, I may share some of your responses and your stuff. And yeah, we'll be back next week with the Black A Crew uh episode two season whatever um review. And also when Star starts on what's that the uh, like uh one week, one week from yesterday, I believe. Uh, so, next Tuesday or Wednesday, something like that. But when Star comes back, you know, we'll get in the Star. Because Black Ink Crew and Star, that's where we're going to be at for the next few weeks. As always, be bold, be beautiful, be brave, be loving, be prosperous. But most importantly, be you. Because you were made to be put on this earth for a reason. And don't ever let no one else tell you otherwise. Peace.